Hey guys, I'm Eric Rossi. I am a mix engineer and I'm gonna give you a quick walkthrough of the session Higher, which is from the OGs. And the OGs are actually the original uh, all-female Beyonce band with the addition of Kat Dyson, who uh, played with Prince and Cyndi Lauper, an incredible guitar player. Amazing band, super cool song, and to make it even cooler, it was actually recorded at Wham! in San Francisco. And if you don't know who they are, they are actually uh, a nonprofit group and they work to advance uh, women in the music industry, specifically in the technical side of things. And they're a group that I've really admired for a long time uh, and you know, always wanted to be able to work with or support in some way. So to be able to work on the session is, is really cool. Uh, and the fact that you guys are gonna have the ability to work on the session and have access to these really well recorded tracks from these incredible musicians is super cool. So I'm just gonna show you what's in the session first. So when you get it, it's not a huge session, but everything is a real recording. There are no synths, you know, it's all real instruments. So it presents its own set of challenges. And I think for a lot of people, that's gonna be somewhat unique. Yeah. It's time to make some protest music. Got the OGs. Okay. Let's get it. Let's get it then. The funky horns, uh-huh. So we've got vocals. And when you get them, these vocals are actually one long take. I've split them up so that they can be treated individually. And when you get my session, you'll get to see why and dig in, see all of my processing. So we've got uh, lead vocals in yellow. We've got overdubs, ad libs, background vocals. And then we've got here another uh, vocal, which is more of a singing vocal that does both ad libs and leads. Uh, and then on the hook, we have some uh, stacks. So pretty, pretty standard. And then for instruments, we have drums and you'll see them here. You get uh, some killer percussion, three bass tracks, one DI, two mics, and actually only a single guitar track, which uh, it's a killer track, but it actually makes it slightly challenging and interesting. And then you have a horn section of stacks, and one of the other really interesting things about the session is that to get the drums to be as big as they need to be, because it's a fairly sparse arrangement, there's no electric guitars that are driving, there's no rhythm chugs, none of that. So it's gotta be carried by the bass and by the drums. What I did is I actually created samples from these drums. So you're gonna see at the end of the drum tracks, you'll actually have tracks where you get single hits of all the drums. So you get the snare, soft, medium, hard, same thing for all the toms, same thing for the kick and even the cymbals. And so what I did is I created samples with those and then put them into Drum Exchanger, which allows me to essentially dial out the bleed. So I'm replacing, say the kick in, Mike, I'm replacing that with the same kick, but the kick that's been recorded with all the mics. So it's kind of a super sample of that. And then you can blend as much as you want. So that's something that you can create your own. And when you get my session, you'll actually have those samples and be able to see how that's done. You'll also get to see, of course, all the individual processing as well as the bus processing. So drum bus, parallel drum bus, which has some really cool stuff going on with saturation, distortion, going into a reverb, then further saturation. Um, two different drum verbs. Uh, and then you're gonna get things like dynamic EQ that is side-chained to a key input that is sent from another channel. So for instance, the bass has a lot of high mids going on and uh, it sounds killer when it's with the full band, but when the vocal comes in, it starts to conflict because they're playing the same range. So what I've done is I've sent a side-chain signal to the dynamic EQ and told it to duck that frequency range when the vocal's in. So you'll see how that works, and I've done that on the guitars, on the bass, and so there's a few elements that are kind of ducking, and they're doing it transparently, but in a way that allows the mix to sound cohesive without things fighting. Killer reverb for horns, actually. Um, in fact, I had never used this reverb on horns before, but it's amazing, so this is, my, this is now my go-to. Uh, my bussing, going to instrument and, and vocal bus with the plugins on that, and then my master bus, which has a number of uh, plugins that are doing things very subtly, but adding up to a pretty big result. So all in all, again, and not a hugely 
complex session in terms of numbers, but a lot of really interesting things going on and a lot of cool processing that you guys can dig into. So one of the things uh, you're going to get to dig into is the drums. Here, I'm going to play you guys the original drums, which are the stems, uh, as you guys are going to get them and as I got them, and then I'll play you the final drums. Okay, and here are the drums after. And so obviously they're huge compared to the originals. You have room, you have the tail, you have uh, their you know, slamming hard. But one thing is that we don't lose the articulation. A lot of times when you have samples uh, on a real kit, they're done in such a way that you just get a burst of one velocity that just hits on the snare on the kick. Same thing, you lose a lot of the ghost notes. And it was really important to not lose those here. So you're going to see how to go from those original drums to this without losing those and how to create these snare samples that we're using. And I'm just going to quickly, I'm going to show you what it sounds like when we take the original snare and we mix in this new snare sample that we've created from this kit. So as you can see, we can go from fully sample, and again, sample of the same drum, but we've mixed out all the bleed all the way to the original and everything in between. Same thing for the kick, I'll show you that. So the original. And then the final result. So you'll see that for the kick, snare, all the toms, and you'll actually get those sections, which are right here after the main drum section, after the main song, to create your own samples. And you can use those in other songs, use it in this, however you want. So one of the other things I want to show quickly is how I utilize these bass tracks. So the plugins are on, I'm going to keep those on, but I'm going to show you how I'm using each one because the individual plugins, that's something you can dig into, but what's more important is what I'm trying to achieve with it. Because again, the goal of all of this is to enhance the song and the intention of the song on an emotional level. That's, that's really what mixing is. So the tools are great, but what's important is what your goal is with them. So in this case, here's the main bass sound that we've created. Okay, great sounding bass, divs unbelievable. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the second mic, which is only a little, uh, little small amount of room that we're going to hear. But where it gets fun is what I've done is I've taken the DI and here's what the DI sounded like on its own. Sounds extreme, right? Well, the goal is when the drums and bass are playing and the whole band is playing, the bass is still cutting through, but it's not as big as we'd like it to be because, again, we don't have um, a distorted guitar. So we're using this to kind of fill in uh, some of the frequency spectrum and the sound stage that a uh, distorted guitar would. So I'm going to play you with and without and listen to the difference. And in context, yeah. it's time to make some protest music. Got the OGs. Okay, let's get it. Let's get it there. The funky horns. Uh huh. I, 
So you can hear that it's not super obvious in context, but what it does is it makes the bass sound wider, bigger, and adds some aggression without losing the articulation in the center. So that's a quick walk through the session. You guys are gonna have a chance to dig in much more in depth uh, with both the original files and with my session. And I'm sure you're gonna come up with some killer mixes. Can't wait to hear them. Again, Eric Rossi, have fun mixing.